Welcome back to another episode of CAD Jungle. In today's episode, we're going to be modeling this here. All right, let's hop right to it. What we're going to be doing first is starting out by creating the base. To do that, let's go ahead and start out by creating a new component. And let's create a sketch. And let's put it on the top plane. To do that, select the top view. Select the visible plane. Let's create a circle, center diameter circle, very center point. I'm going to give it some dimensions. We're going to continue to create the sketch. Use construction line. Make it about 100 millimeters in height. I'm going to make it 55 millimeters to the right and another 55 millimeters to the left. create another center diameter circle in the center at the top right at the point where we created those two lines let's go ahead and turn off construction make this 30 millimeters on the very edge of both of these two lines we're going to also create center diameter circle make it 20 millimeters Now to get this portion right here, we're going to use a slot tool. So let's go here into create, slot, center point slot. We'll start here to here and we'll drag it out and type in 30 millimeters and it's set up. Want to take the line tool and let's go ahead and attach this to the circle here. Try to make it as about as perpendicular as we can get it. And if not, you can always give it a constraint to make sure that it's vertical. And as you can see here, I didn't need to go ahead and use the tangent constraint because it already set it up for us. All right, let's go ahead and finish the sketch. And let's select the profile. So we're going to select the big circle, this section here, this section here, this section here, and the center. We're going to give it a 77 millimeter height or thickness. Let's go ahead and turn back on the sketch because what we want to do is we want to create this here and this here. These, these are raised sections. All right, so we we'll turn on the sketch once again, and we're going to select those profiles. This profile here, here, and here, and we're going to raise it up to about 10 millimeters. Make sure the operation is set to join, not cut. What we're going to do now is create this long cylinder here. But we're going to keep the sketch on. So go ahead, use the extrude tool, select this profile, and we're going to make it 88 millimeters in length. Make sure the operation is set to join. And we can turn off the sketch. What we need to do now is create this post right here, or shall I say this raised section. So let's create a sketch on this face. 
I'm going to use the center diameter circle starting in the center. Make it 45 millimeters. Finish the sketch. And we want to extrude that portion to about 23 millimeters. Next, we're going to create this portion right here. To do that, we're going to have to create a set of planes. So I'm going to go ahead and use the offset plane. And I'm going to select this plane here and bring it out this way and make it about negative 28 millimeters. I'm going to create a sketch on that plane we just created. I'm going to start out with the line command. We're going to be drawing a line on this edge here. Let's go ahead and draw a vertical part of this line. Make it about 10 millimeters. Hit the check mark so we can end it. Bring this up. You'll see a blue dotted line. That means it's actually on the same level as the other line. So we can terminate it there. Okay, what we're going to do is a little tricky. So we're going to left click and hold and then drag it over in order to create this arc for us until you see the square in this setup. What we want to do is make this point in line with this point here. So we're going to select our horizontal vertical constraint, select this point and this point and it's locked into place. Last but not least, let's give this bottom line here a dimension of about 20 millimeters. And that sketch is fully defined, basically meaning we cannot move it or alter it in any way, shape or form unless we actually physically change the dimensions. What we want to do now is basically set this portion to join here. And to do that, what we do is select the extrude command. So we don't have to get out of the sketch. We can select finish sketch here or here. Or we can just bypass that and hit the E key. And it'll take us directly into the extrude command. On the extrude command panel, let's go ahead and select extent type and set it to object. Now let's just go ahead and select this face here and it'll automatically join. Click OK. What we want to do next is set it up so we can create the holes here, here, and here, as well as here. So we're going to create a sketch on this face here, so which is basically the bottom. We're going to draw a series of four holes. The first hole, the big one at the top, we're going to make 30 millimeters. And as you can see, based on this radius here, we should have an invisible uh, marker here. So you can select it and you'll see a circle. We'll left click and drag out and we'll make this one 12 millimeters. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And also if we go right here in the very center, it should lock into place and you'll see a square pop up and we'll make that our center point and we'll make this 18 millimeters. Next, let's finish the sketch. We're going to use the extrude command. Select the profiles we just created. The four circles. Drag the arrow up. And in doing so, let's go back to the extrude panel under extent type and select all. And that should do it for us. What we want to do now is create this threaded hole here, right in the center. And to do that, let's create a sketch on this face here. And 
And let's find the actual center point. We'll be right here based on this radius here. We'll make this 10 millimeters. Let's go ahead and finish the sketch. Let's use the extrude command. Select the profile we just created. Under extrude panel and extend type, select two object and we'll select the inside and it'll cut into the hole up to this object. Let's use the chamfer command because we want to bevel this edge before we create the threads. So we'll select chamfer, select this edge. Actually, let's make it a 0.1 for now. Let's go ahead and use the thread command. If I can find it, there we go. Select the inside cylinder. It's going to be modeled. And that's all you have to do. It's going to be full length. Now I'm going to show you a little trick here. Let's just grab it and drag it ahead of the thread command. Now I want to modify this again. So I'm going to select edit feature. I'm going to drag it in real time to get it to exactly where I want it to be. And you can do this as you see fit. I'm going to set it to about right there. Okay, next we're going to create this portion right here that basically connects this cylinder to this cylinder. And to do that, we're going to be using the, th the rib command. So let's select the right view. Create a sketch on the visible plane. We're going to run into an issue here because we don't necessarily have an edge to lock onto. To solve this problem, let's go ahead and select P for the project command. Select bodies, select the entire object, and it'll give us a point to work from. Select the line command. And we'll start at this point here and bring it over to the edge until you see the X. And let's give it a dimension. From this point here to this point here, we want it to be 40 millimeters. Let's go ahead and finish the sketch. And next, we're going to be choosing the rib command. We're going to make it eight millimeters. Again, if you run into a situation where it looks like this, we want it to be symmetric on both sides. Or if it looks like this, just flip the direction and you should be good to go. Okay, what we need to do next is create this rib as well. So what we need to do is create a plane that's gonna give us the opportunity to do this. To do that, we're gonna to go to, to construct, axis through cylinder cone torus. Once that's created, we're gonna go back to construct select plane at angle and select the axis we just chose and make sure that the plane is perpendicular to this rib here. So right now it's set at zero degrees and make sure it's perpendicular. Let's create a sketch in the plane we just created. And we're going to run into the same problem when we try to create the rib. We don't have a point to lock onto. We have one here, but nothing here. So we use the P for project. We don't need to select bodies. We just select the top here. And now we have a point to work from. So we can drag it here and here to these two points. And we're gonna create one more on the inside. And that's basically gonna give us our lead in guide. We'll actually move back out. I actually want it to follow the line, so zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. 
Start here, bring it over about one millimeter. Okay. I want it to stop at this edge because if I don't, the rib is going to go all the way over to the other side and that's not what I want. So I'm going to select the rib command again, finish the sketch, select the rib command, select this profile. And also want to select this line as well. Now, if I don't select this line, I'm going to show you what happens. There's nothing I can do about it. I don't want it to go all the way to the side. So I'm going to select this other side. Okay. Flip direction and it stops exactly where I need it to. Now I want to get the other side going. So I use the mirror command for that. Type is going to be set to features. I want to select the rib I just created. Mirror plane. It's going to be this plane here. That's perpendicular to this object here. Compute option set to adjust. And we're good to go. Last but not least, let's go ahead and create a fillet on this edge here and this edge here. And we'll give it 10 millimeters. We'll hide the construction line and that pretty much wraps it up. Well, I hope you enjoyed this brief and quick tutorial. Stick around and I shall see you in the next one.